This is a great theme, especially for those who adore movies. For a guy to throw in a successful Hollywood party, one might consult the work of Rebecca Beauchamp, which provides nuanced tutorials on this topic. Use red paper for the invitation. On the front, dry star with glue, then sparkle gold glitter over it. Include your name, the address of the location, how late it will start, what to bring, how to dress. Beauchamp's Hollywood Party manuals are designed to facilitate your understanding and pursuit of the Hollywood Party. Go to a party store and ask if they have red carpet props. If they don't, ask if they know where to get one. If you cannot find a pre-made red carpet anywhere, make one out of pepper. Of course, your Hollywood Party may include a great deal of acting. Beauchamp's manuals help create a healthy context for acting, help develop respect for acting as a form, something that can touch and affect people. Hang gold balloons up and make the room appear glamorous. Get pictures and videotape unless someone is uncomfortable with it. Beauchamp helps us to avoid the possible traps of the Hollywood party, tension, self-consciousness, lack of body control, and proper use of imagination. You will enjoy and benefit from these manuals. Finally, don't plan the entire party. The more you have scheduled, the more tiring the party process becomes. Just relax and let the party take its course. Please welcome the decorator. Rebecca, do you want the microphone? Do I want then I have to like It's I long. Know. It's very long. I'll take a microphone. Yeah. Sure. You should. <laughs> series and remain un untitled. I don't, I don't like giving poems titles because I like to think of poems as gestures, right? And when you give them titles, it's weird and they become objects and I don't like that. Um, so here, here goes nothing. Sighing, the punchline was the thick smog of estrogen lining your gums. The venture felt real and we believed in the practicality of your product. But when you spoke, everyone in the hall knew your game. I had a feeling tell me I could read the difference between prosthetic and pathetic with the tip of one stilettoed heel. Grew my nails long in the absence of one slick Louboutin, which sounds like the name of a hip new antidepressant. Pills are like pearls over here again. And we returned to what I'd look like in the cartoon version of my life. Name one poem written in the absence of gender, and I will say to you, dear reader, if it would satisfy you, would you please suck on my tramp stamp until you're tasting the boy in the ink, Ben furled like an infant in your cheek. I could continue overriding the fetal metaphor, 
but I'm dropping it. If you drop a good idea on its head in the spring of its life, does it suffer from seizures forever? I don't want to know. Speaking of drool, mothers. My complex is hot like a muscle. It has a heartbeat, but that's inside someone else. But who? Everyone wants to write narrative, poems full of torpor and life. Congratulations, poets. You're hurling dicks into the plummy ether. Where is the rotten yonic poem that takes life and takes life and takes life until she realizes her body's so obviously functional? She'd take epilepsy like Louboutin any day just to feel less female and receptive. 5MG, E.G. Cash. Most lines in Jammed begin with and. And I'm obsessed with money. I'm obsessed with surgery. I'm obsessed with my body. I pick at it. I am masturbated with a hairbrush, a shower head, a ladle, towel, cash wad. Dear hairbrush who became for 15 minutes a new limb inside me, I feel like God rewriting your intent. Gripping the bristles, I felt the handle become real inside me. I tell my good humor, shut up. I go jogging a lot by myself. By the way, the difference was or, as in you could be something else, or or, as in gold, as in it could be counterfeit, whatever. So I think before I continue reading, I'm going to sort of explain this series that I'm working on. When I was like 10, I used to be obsessed with making websites. I was one of those like homeschooled freaks. So I had no friends, but I was really into this um, website called Map Mice. And it was like GeoCities for kids, right? It was like you would graduate to like free webs and then you'd make a GeoCities page. And then, you know, um, but first you had these Map Mice sites. And I would make like a ton of, a ton of them when I was really, really little. And I think that informed my poetic uh, project. And one of the things I would do is I would pretend to be a boy on the internet. I would pretend to be a boy named Ben who liked skateboarding and a Fall Out Boy. <laughs> um, and it was fun. And I don't, I, I never really kind of think, I never think about it. I kind of like put that memory away. And recently, um, after a hypnosis session, no, not after a hypnosis <laughs> session. <laughs> Uh, recently, I started thinking about it again and started writing about it again. So I, gave, I decided to make Ben a person, and I decided to give him a family with a mom named Jeanette, who's um, very much female. And um, Ben has friends and a life and a personality of his own, and I'm trying to write, write them back into, um, I guess, my own personal history. So if you hear names and you don't know what they mean, now you know. Okay, Jeanette, you are now getting way out of control. I wrung my hands clean till they were pure mathematics, better yet purely mathematical. Where the thumbs don't work, you break out in quartos. Where clean and clear doesn't work, you break out in thumbprints. Busy typing, I asked where my fingers went. Busy palliating my gravitas in blonde, I purred through my gender like a rake through batter. Who was I then? An acrobat with the thorax minted in reason, each muscled indent a syllable. If you pronounce my body, for example, it is a head-to-toe gargle. I am wet all the time. On my fifth grade website, I wrote, welcome. This page belongs to Ben. I am 10 years old. I love skateboarding and punk music. Ask me anything here. And I felt like a pervert for loving this. Loving the prosthetic cock I'd shorn through data. So I gave Ben a mother so girlish, even her absence ribboned into curls. Tailored perm omniscient, LOL. I want to be so thin, I fit the dimensions of the lyric eye. I want abs flat as a skinned animal. Over Malbec, in feeling aphoristic to my friends who were girls, I say a woman's just a bunch of little babies lobbed together. In reality, I am jealous of everyone growing up without breasts. Sincerities of plum, I smack between tits one and two, so numbers might be fruitful. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet and dumb. It is easy enough to insist on being the boy this time, please, when you are pile-driving Rachel in the guest bathroom. 
There is nothing violent about a bowl of potpourri toppling off a cistern. There is, however, something evil about hiding Ben. I am 10 years old in aeons of code and lingo. Oh, cherub, who might a better lesbian of me make? Let me need you. Pluck the wheels out from underneath your glissade in real time like baby teeth and couch them behind my own so I might talk a better talk. In full mouth, pronounce welcome. Each note between we, a hormone glistening. Jeanette, I left Dick in the city where his sayonara was dynamic as auto-tune music. In the bathtub, my stubble being harsh, I admired these blind, bland, blonde nostalgia. Juvenile's 13th satire says the plundered keep their weapons. However, what when this plummy coil untethered begs new thirst? This lands an epitaph newly minted. Viva Las Vegas. What the actual fuck? I am way too anxious about my body to show concern for anything beyond the trajectory my arm fat carves when it shakes and shakes like an epileptic on Space Mountain. Was that cool? First rule of being a poet is you've got to sacrifice your good sense to the overarching motif, which must stay ripe, lest it wilt. Wilt like grandma. Newsflash. The entire universe is really a wink of light on the back of a dog dragging his fur and nonsense down the freeway, avoiding your dad and his loose flesh, his F-150. From his POV, the rear view's a crown. OMW, to placate the old mistress, but it's more erotic than that. Everything that's not a hot tub plays subaltern to the business of ego, which I invented with nothing but my hair and the rest of me. There's something so spiritual about airport terminals. In fact, I am in Los Angeles all the time, every single day of my life. My old man milks 100 into pure zinc. Sugar dads in my face, like crudites. Von Rouge, I'm like crudites or veggie plates. Try tapas, try CBT. Try your wife's cherry bomb lipstick on in the mirror, in private, financial reports muted in the background. The C and C spans a broken halo. My chummy pallers the shit because I'm pregnant with something worse than money and everyone knows. Who's at my door bearing gifts this time? Oh look, it is the old grind, mouth churning like a search engine. I might be lonely. I might be Botoxed out. The needle puckering through verb, pure girl. I logged on because I wanted to know the pagito like the tongue might know an after dinner man. I lick the edge of the frame and say, ouch. Where every moment constitutes my tongue's wilted shadow, I am finally talking the talk. No one sees me. I'm trying to figure out, because there are people in the crowd who I went to school with, or was like very close to when I went to college. And I kind of want to read like old things that they're familiar with as like homage. Um, but I don't know if they're in my archive. <laughs> so I may sit here scrolling, which is a performance. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, no, no, no. Oh, no, my website's changed. Have you seen it? <laughs> We should put it up on the, the thing, it's, it's great. Um, yeah, so I spent some time in Los Angeles this summer and wrote a lot of poems about it. I don't know if I like them, but I think it's important that I read them. I'm just gonna purge the LA demon inside me. Um, you don't know, no, I'm gonna read this one. So I'm really, <laughs> I wrote a really embarrassing uh, poem about Disney characters having sex. And I, I, I don't know. It's a little hokey, right? But it's also literally about my life. And I called it body poem because this summer a couple a couple weeks ago, someone very close to me told me that my poems were rotten because I said body too much, right? And that's like a poet's call out <coughs> that if you say that you're like lame, a lame poet. <laughs> but um, body is in this one. And, uh, you can suck my dick. 